In this video, we will do a full Vocaloid production to make a WAV file and MP3 file of an original song. We will use Avid software called Sibelius to write some files. We will write a sonnet about a historical figure and use the words as well as the MIDI file from Sibelius to make a WAV file of our Vocaloid's voice in Vocaloid 5 editor. We will then use Avid software Pro Tools to master a WAV file and MP3 of the song. I use Pro Tools as a doll because it comes with all the instruments you need and to load a new instrument you just download the instrument and restart your computer and Pro Tools recognizes it. But any doll can use the MIDI files you will make on Sibelius. All of this software costs money, programs cost money. In the description are links to where you can purchase legal copies. I do not condone using crack software because this in no way supports the Vocaloid community. If you want to be serious about this, you will have to spend some money. With all this said, let's get started with Avid's, Avid Sibelius. Open Sibelius and you will see a quick start window. Go to the New Score tab and then choose Blank. Then go to the Change Instruments button. Click on it and an Add or Remove Instruments window will appear. Go to the window on the left and scroll down to Keyboards. Under Keyboards, double click on Piano until it appears on the right. You should have Piano A and Piano B in the window on the right. There will be no piano in the score, but we will need to fill the page with instruments to create a better workflow. The next instruments are in the score. Go to Singers and double click on either alto or tenor to put one singer in the score. Alto is generally a female voice and tenor is, is generally a male voice. I'm going to use Kaido English and I feel he is in best in range as a tenor, so I double clicked on tenor until one appeared on the right. Then go to Guitars on the left and double click on Bass Guitar Notation until one appears on the right. Then in Guitars, double click on Acoustic Guitar Notation until one appears on the right. Then double click again until you have two Acoustic Guitar Notations on the right. Then go to Percussion and Drums on the left and double click Drum Set Rock until one appears on the right. Then go down and click OK. In the Quick Start window, scroll down to the Time Signature Setup and set the time to 7 8. Then scroll down to tempo and put a check in the metronome mark box and set the tempo to 180 beats a minute. We're using a time signature which is a multiple of 60 seconds or exactly one minute to better help with the animation. Then scroll down to key signature setup and select the key of C sharp major. Then scroll down to score information setup and in the title I always put a number because I usually write the music before I write the lyrics and do not know what the song is about at first. Anyway, put a title, put your name in composer songwriter, put your name in lyricist and put your name in after copyright, then go down and click create. The quick start window will disappear and the software will open up showing a score page with five empty bars, your instruments listed down the side of the page. Look at the first acoustic guitar and click on it and change acoustic to rhythm then the next acoustic guitar change acoustic to lead so that you have a rhythm guitar and a lead guitar then if you want you can change tenor or alto depending on the one you use to the voice of your vocaloid if you know by now which one you will use if not just use voice in my case Kaido go to file save and Sibelius will automatically save in the scores in the scores folder in your documents folder. I suggest you make a folder in your scores folder for your project files and save your score there so that all the MIDI files you export later will save there also. This will keep all your project files in one spot. So zoom in on your first drum bar. Go to view keypad and call up your keypad and set it to voice one blue and select the eighth note by either clicking on it or hitting 3 on the, your keypad. Then hit alternate shift 1. This will make the top of the note an X and will make it a symbol on the drum bar. So along the top space put in 7 hi-hats. Then hit escape 3 times and click on the and select the drum bar with the hi-hats and hit control C to copy. Then hold the shift key down and select bar 4 of the drums so that bars 1 through 4 are selected and hit Control v to paste the hi-hats into them. You should have four bars each with seven eighth note hi-hats in them. On your keypad icon, put it on voice two green and select the quarter note or hit four on your keypad and in the first space available in bar one on the drums, put a note on the bottom line bass drum 
and then a note on the upper center space snare drum and then on the bottom line bass drum again. The next note you need is a snare on the top center space but there is only room for an eighth note. Put a quarter note in this space and there will be two eighth notes with a tie going into the next bar. Continue by putting a note on the bottom line bass drum and then put a note on the top center space snare. Continue putting in the bass drum and snare drum as you go along and between bar 3 and bar 4 is two eighth notes tied on the bass drum line. By the end of bar 4 you should have a quarter note on the snare drum space evenly ending on the last space of in bar 4. Go to your keypad icon and keeping it on voice 2 green change the note to a 16th note or hit 2 on the keypad and starting on the last snare drum note put in 4 16th notes. Then select the 6th hi-hat in bar 4 and hit 4 on the keypad to change it to a quarter note then up arrow once to make it a cymbal crash. From here on out you will have to keep your drums in 4 bar sections if you want them to sound right. Zoom out and you can see your whole score. Hold control and use the scroll wheel of your mouse to zoom in and out. Select the first drum bar, hold the shift key down and select the fourth bass piano bar at the bottom so that all the instruments in bars 1 through 4 are selected. Hit Ctrl C to copy, then highlight the empty 5 bars of the drums and hit Ctrl V to paste into it, then hit Ctrl B, then Ctrl V, then again Ctrl B, then Ctrl V, and one more time Ctrl B, then Ctrl V. This will give you 20 bars with 5 sections of drums 4 bars long. Now let's find chords naturally in the key of C sharp major. In the key of C sharp every note is a sharp making the C sharp scale C sharp, D sharp, E sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B sharp. And if you apply the formula major minor minor major major minor diminished you get the natural chords as C sharp major, D sharp minor, E sharp minor, F sharp major, G sharp major, A sharp minor, and B sharp diminished. The key of C sharp is a bright sounding key with all its sharps, so let's use the minor chords for our song. The, the key minor is the minor not in a pair, and in this case it is A sharp minor. And the other two minors in the key are D sharp minor and E sharp minor. Now let's quickly look at the form of the English sonnet we will use for lyrics. There are four ten syllable lines in the sonnet, three or four line verses, and the final verse is a pair of lines. Again, each line has ten notes. So let's do a four bar intro in the first verse, which is A10, B10, A10, B10. So let's use four bars per line, and using minor chords, we will outline our chord progression. So in the intro, let's use A sharp minor, D sharp minor, E sharp minor, a sharp minor. Then in A10, we will use A sharp minor, A sharp minor, D sharp minor, D sharp minor. Then in B10, line 2, let's use E sharp minor, E sharp minor, A sharp minor, A sharp minor. Then in A10, line 3, let's use D sharp minor, D sharp minor, E sharp minor, E sharp minor. Then in B10, line 4, let's use D sharp minor, D sharp minor, a sharp minor, A sharp minor. It's important to use pairs of chords in the sections that will have lyrics even if you use different chords. Zoom out and look at your score and you will see the five sections which are divided by the roll of the snare. Zoom into the rhythm guitar one and let's put in our chords on your keypad icon. Make sure you're on voice one blue and have the eighth note selected. Hit escape three times and hit Control K and your cursor will be a blue arrow. Click it above the rhythm guitar bar 1 and type A sharp M small M space and D sharp M small M space and E sharp M small M space and three chord symbols will appear. Drag the E sharp minor symbol to bar 3 and drag the D sharp minor symbol to bar 2. Then go to view fretboard, call up your fretboard and drag it out to below the rhythm guitar bar. Then on your keypad hit number 3 or select the 8th note on your keypad icon and put an A sharp in the first space of the bar 1 and then put a D sharp in the first space on bar 2 then put an E sharp in the first space on bar 3. 
Now click on the A sharp minor chord symbol and look at the fretboard to see where to put the notes. Click on the note and put in the other notes of the chord by clicking them in on the fretboard. Once you can click on the chord symbol and click on the notes and the dots do not change, you have it. Some of the notes have natural symbols and flat symbols. Click on these individually and down arrow each so that the accidental natural or flat symbol disappears and the dots on the fretboard do not change. This will give the chords a clean and proper presentation. So let's put in the D sharp minor. Click on the chord symbol to put, see where to put the notes, then click on the notes and put them in. The notes should match the chord symbol when you click on each. Then select any notes with a natural or flat symbol and down arrow them so that the natural or flat disappears and the chord looks clean and matches the symbol when you click on each. So let's put in the E sharp minor. Click on the chord symbol to see where to put the notes, then click on the notes and put them in. The notes should match the chord symbol when you click on each. Then select any notes with a natural or flat symbol and down arrow them so that the natural or flat disappears and the chord does not change. Now click on the bottom note of the A sharp minor, hold the shift key down and select the top note of the chord so that the entire chord is selected. Then hit Ctrl C to copy. Then select the whole first bar of the rhythm guitar including the chord symbol and hit Ctrl V to paste A sharp minor chords throughout bar 1. The chord symbol will disappear. You don't want a bunch of chord symbols on your page when you cut and paste. Now let's do the next bar which is D sharp minor. Now click on the bottom note of the D sharp minor, hold the shift key down and select the top note of the chord so that the entire chord is selected. Then hit Ctrl C to copy. Then select the whole second bar of the rhythm guitar including the chord symbol and hit Ctrl V to paste D sharp minor chords throughout bar 2. The chord symbol will disappear. Now let's put in the E sharp minor on bar 3. Now click on the bottom note of the E sharp minor, hold the shift key down and select the top note of the chord so that the entire chord is selected. Then hit Ctrl C to copy. Then select the whole third bar of the rhythm guitar including the chord symbol and hit Ctrl V to paste E sharp minor chords throughout bar 1. The chord symbol will disappear so move your fretboard and look at the bass guitar bar 1 and put in 7 8 notes on bass clef A sharp. Then in bass guitar bar 2 put in 7 8 notes on bass clef D sharp. Then in bass guitar bar 3 put in 7 8 notes on bass clef E sharp. Now select bar 1 of the rhythm guitar, hold the shift key down and select bar 1 of the bass guitar so that the bass guitar and rhythm guitar in bar 1 are selected, then hit Ctrl C to copy it. Then look at your chord map that you made to see where the other A sharps are. Highlight bar 4 of the rhythm guitar, hold the shift key down and highlight bar 6 so that bars 4, 5 and 6 of the rhythm guitar are selected and hit Ctrl V to paste A sharp guitar chords and bass into them. Then highlight bars 11 and 12 in the same way and hit Ctrl V to paste into them. Then highlight bars 19 and 20 of the rhythm guitar and hit Ctrl V to paste A sharp chords and bass into them. Now click on bar 2 of the rhythm guitar which is D sharp minor and hold the shift key down and select the bass guitar bar 2. Also then hit Ctrl C to copy and, and then highlight bars 7 and 8 of the rhythm guitar and hit Ctrl V to paste into them. Then highlight bar 13, 14 of the rhythm guitar and hit Ctrl V to paste into them. Then highlight bars 17 and 18 and hit Ctrl V to paste into them. Now select the rhythm guitar bar 3, hold the shift key down and select the bass guitar bar 3 and hit Ctrl C to copy. Then select the rhythm guitar bars 9 and 10 and hit Ctrl V to paste into them. Then select the rhythm guitar bars 17 and 18 and hit Ctrl V to paste into them. The chords in your progression are complete for this section. Go to the second page and look at the titles down the side of the score and we want to change A to R and A to L to better represent the rhythm guitar and lead guitar. Then change the singer to your singer's initial, in my case K for Kaido. Now go to view mixer and drag out your mixer and mute by half by clicking on the mute button once the rhythm guitar. Then hit the space bar to audition your score so far. You should save often. Now zoom in on bar 5 of your voice. 
make sure your keypad is icon is on voice one blue and select the quarter note. Now starting on the first space, put in quarter notes on A sharp in bar five. The fourth quarter note will create two eighth notes with a tie to the next bar. Continue putting in quarter notes on bar six until it is full. Then select bar five of the voice. Hold the shift key down and select bar six so that bars five and six of the voice are selected and hit control C to copy. Select bar seven of the voice and hit control V to paste into it. Then while the two bars are still selected, go down arrow four times until the notes are on D sharp. Select bar nine of the voice and hit control V to paste into it. Then while the two bars are highlighted, go down arrow three times until the notes are on E sharp. Select bar 11 of the voice and hit control V to paste into it. Select bar 13 of the voice and hit control V to paste into it. And while the two bars are still highlighted, go down arrow four times until the notes are on D sharp. Select bar 15 of the voice and hit control V to paste into it. And while the two bars are still highlighted, go down arrow three times until the notes are on E sharp. Select bar 17 of the voice and hit control V to paste into it. And while the two bars are still highlighted, go down arrow four times until the notes are on D sharp. Select bar 19 of the voice and hit control V to paste into it. Now right click on the full score tab and go to your voice part. In my case, Kaido. So go to bar five and delete the first three quarter notes. Go to bar 9 and delete the first 3 quarter notes. Then go to bar 13 and delete the first 3 quarter notes. Last go to bar 17 and delete the first 3 quarter notes. Then go to bar 8 and make the second to the last quarter note a half note by hitting 5 on the keypad. Then make the second to the last note in bar 12 a note, half note. And then make the second and the last note in bar 16 a half note by clicking on 5 on the keypad. Then one more time in bar 20 click on the second to the last note and hit 5 on your keypad. Now you have a template of four ten syllable lines of lyrics that will fit one verse of the sonnet we will write. Close the voice part and go back to the full score view and for now select the first bar of the rhythm guitar and hold the shift key down and select the fourth bar of the rhythm guitar so that the first four bars of the rhythm guitar is selected and hit control C to copy. Then select the first bar of the lead guitar and hit control V to paste into it. This will act as a template for a guitar solo before each verse. Now zoom out so you can see your entire score. Select bar 1 of the drums, hold the shift key down and select bar 20 of the bottom piano so that all the music is selected, then hit control C, then hit control B to call up a bar, and then hit control V to paste into it, then hit control B to call up a bar, then hit control V to paste into it. And one more time, hit Ctrl-B to call up a bar, then hit Ctrl-V to paste into it. Now look at the last 20 bars and select the drum bar just after the lead guitar template. Then move 8 bars over, just past the second drum roll, and hold the shift key down, and select the bottom piano, and hit Ctrl-Delete, and in the flyout window, click Yes to delete this section from the score. This will fit the last verse of the sonnet, which has only two lines. Now look at your score and find and select the drum bar over the first bar of one of the guitar solo templates. Hold the shift key down and select the bottom piano four bars later so that all four bars of the solo template are selected. Then hit control C. Then hit control B to call the bar. Then hit control V to paste into it. Now right click on the full score tab above your score window and go to lead guitar. Starting in bar one, use the chords to guide to put in a solo using simple notes. In the first second and third bars, I hit the bottom notes of the chord twice, then hit the whole chord twice, and then I run up the chord with the three notes that were left. Then in bar four, I did a simple run up, the notes of the chord. Then on the second solo, starting at bar 21, the first three bars, I just did a simple run up the notes of the chord, chords, and then in bar 24, I hit the two bottom notes, and then the two notes of the chord, and then a small run of the chord with the last three notes. Saved often. Escape out and select bar one, hold the shift key down and select bar four and hit control C. To copy your first solo, then select the first bar of the third solo on bar 41 and hit control V to paste into it. 
then select bar 73, which is the first bar of the last solo, and hit Ctrl V to paste into it. Then highlight bar 21 of the first bar of the second solo, hold the shift key down and select the last bar of the second solo, bar 27, to select the whole second solo and hit Ctrl C to copy it. Then select the first bar of the fourth solo, bar 61, and hit Ctrl V to paste into it. Go back to the full score by clicking on the full score tab and audition your score. Listen carefully to the lead guitar solos and the lyrics templates to check for bad notes and fix any you hear. Now right click on the full score tab and go to your voice part, in my case, Kaido. Now look at the first section of lyrics template and choose a random quarter note in the second bar of that section. Click on it and hit the dot on your keypad to make it a dotted quarter note. The note next to it changes to an eighth note and you will still have 10 notes in this section which will fit your sonnet. So go to the next bar and select a random quarter note and hit the dot on the keypad to change it to a dotted quarter note. Now we're going to randomly up and down arrow notes in the lyrics template. You can up arrow twice, then up arrow twice, then up arrow three times, and stay on your chord. You can down arrow three times, then down arrow twice, then down arrow twice, and stay on the chord. Now go to the first note after the tie, select it and up arrow twice. Leave the next note in place. The note after that, go down arrow three times. Remember, it's up two, up two, up three, and down three, down two, down to. Then the next note over, which is the first note in the next bar, select it and go up to, then up to, so that the note is on A sharp. The next note over, go up to until it is on F sharp. Leave the next note where it is and select the first note of the tie and hold the shift key down and select the second note so that the whole tie is selected. Then go up to, up to, to A sharp. Then select the next note over and go up to to F sharp. Leave the last note on D and do not move it. Melodies sound best when they end in the primary note of the chord, so for most of your melodies, you do not need to move the last note except for a few times to give the song variety. So what you just did on the first line of melody, you need to do the same thing but different on the next 13 lines of melody. Change a few notes to dotted and move notes up and down the chord but always make sure you have 10 notes per line of melody. Other than that, you're free to pretty much do anything you want as long as the notes match the chord and there are 10 of them in the line of melody. On the last line, two lines of melody, I went up an octave from the bass note at the start to give the last two lines emphasis. Once you've done this, you have completed the music for your song. Now we are going to write a sonnet about a historical figure. I was born in Texas, but according to my DNA, my direct ancestors are from Britain. So a famous Englishman is J.R.R. Tolkien. So let's write a sonnet about him. He was the author of Lord of the Rings book trilogy. So go online and search J.R.R. Tolkien wiki and pull up his Wikipedia page. I use CorelDRAW to write my lyrics so I can use them in subtitles. You can use any word processor like Notepad or even just write them out by hand. Let's look at the outline of a, the sonnet. The letter is the rhyme scheme and the number is the number of syllables. The outline for our song goes guitar solo, A10, B10, A10, B10, guitar solo, C10, D10, C10, D10, guitar solo, E10, F10, E10, F10, guitar solo, G10, G10. So look at the wiki page about your subject and copy and paste info into your program or write on your paper. In my first case, I copied info on Tolkien. Then I came up with my first 10 syllable lines of my sonnet using this info. The first line ended with the word state. So Google words that rhyme with state and look for RhymeZone or a similar website. I went to RhymeZone and found that state rhymes with fate. So I wrote ten, a 10 syllable line ending in fate. The second line ended in the word child and in rhyme zone I found wild and made a 10 syllable line with wild at the end. I'm calling the first four lines of my sonnet the intro because they introduce the character. The next four lines of the verse will be the adventure. In my case the protagonist goes to war so I wrote 10 syllable lines to represent this. 
the last word of the first line is war, and on rhyme zone I found that that rhymes with shore, and on the second line ended in a way, and at rhyme zone I found that the word fray, but that did not work, so I used phrase, which is the plural, but still close enough. So I looked at the next section of info and decided to make this first theme inspiration. In my case, his memories of the war inspired him to write some of his stories. So the first two lines are easy, and the last word of the first line was killed, and rhyme zone that rhymed with thrilled, and then the second line ended in college, and one of the only words that rhymes with it is knowledge. So I used that to end the last ten syllable line of the third verse. Now the last two lines sum up what the sonnet is about. If there is a question in a sonnet, the last two lines usually answer it. My second to last line ends in reflex, and I'm rhyming it with some what some may consider not to be a word, but in Texas we use the word recollect. It takes some effort, but the more you write in sonnets, the easier it becomes as you begin to think in ten syllable lines. I personally stick strictly to the sonnet format, but in all honesty, if you need an 11 or 12 syllable line, you can change the score to fit it. So now you need to write a sonnet for your song. My sonnet is, Tolkien was born in the Orange Free State down in Africa when he was a child. Became an English writer was his fate, where he wrote stories that were truly wild. As a young man, he was in a world war, but yet he did not enlist right away. He was an officer on foreign shore, where he then did fight in battles and frays. He never forgot his friends that were killed, even when he was at Pembroke College. What well, within the stories he wrote that thrilled were the adventures from his past knowledge. It can be said that a man's life reflects in the stories he tells and recollects. A sonnet lends itself easily to music as the rhyme scheme and syllable count make it lyrical. Now that you have a sonnet that matches your score, open back up your score in Sibelius and right click on the full score tab and open the voice, in my case Kaido, then go to the file export and export a MIDI file of your voice part. Title the file with the name of your song and the singer you will use and it will save in the same folder your score saved in. Close the voice part and with the full score open, go to View Mixer and drag out your mixer and mute by clicking on twice both pianos and the voice, then go to File Export and export a MIDI of the whole score. The muted tracks will not export so you will have just the instruments. Now that you have MIDI files of the score, close the Bayless and open the Vocaloid 5 editor. Click on New Project and a new file will open. Go to File Import and import the MIDI file of your voice. You will find the file saved in the folder you made for your project. Go ahead and agree to the voice it recommends because we will change it. Click on the top track that has no notes and delete it. Click on the notes on the piano roll display and you can go to the voice tab. Click on it and you can change your voice. Go to File Save and save your file in your projects folder. Then click on the musical editor tab and click beneath the first note on the text in a text box appears. You can copy and paste your lyrics into it, then hit tab to go to the next line. I suggest going line by line and don't try to put all the lyrics in at once. Audition and tune your lyrics. Hit the space bar to play them. When you have them sounding good, go to File Audio Mixdown. Note the sample rate so you can match your DAW and save the WAV file in your projects folder. It should be there if you save your V5 VSQ file in the projects folder also. Save the V5 VSQ one last time and close the Vocaloid 5 editor. Now open Pro Tools. In the dashboard window, put in the name of the song and make sure to check the sample rate so that it matches your V5 wave you just made. Click Create. You should now see you should see the edit window. If not, go to Window Edit and call it up. Now go to File Import Audio and find your folder and select the WAV file of your singer and click on it until it appears on the right, then click Done. In Audio Import, you want to import as a new track. Then go to File Import MIDI 
and again you need to locate your project folder in the file system then click open and select a new track to import the tempo map and key signature and click OK. Your MIDI will look like this. The first thing you need to do is raise the bass guitar one octave because for some reason it is an octave too low. Right click on the piano roll and go to event operations transpose. Set the slider to up one octave and click apply. Only click this once or it will go up more than one octave. Now go to your drums and click on this insert right here. Go to multi-channel plugin instrument expand and call up your synthesizer expand to. Click on this little green arrow and follow the path to the drums and put in a kick selector, snare selector, and hat, tom, and sim selector. Then go to the insert on your rhythm guitar and follow the path to expand and click on the little green arrow and follow the path to guitars 56 strat. Then go to the insert on your lead guitar and follow the path to expand. Click on the little green arrow and follow the path to guitars Les Paul lead. Then go to the insert on your bass guitar and follow the path to expand. Click on the little green arrow and follow the path to basses, full finger bass. These are the instruments I'm using, but you can use any instruments you'd like. Hit the spacebar to play your song and go to Window Mix to call up your mixer to master your song. Once you're satisfied with the mix, go to your edit window and make sure this arrow is at the end of your song so you don't cut off, cut it off or run too long. Then go to the file bounce mix and a bounce mix window appears. Click on add mp3 and click bounce and a filing window appears. Go to your projects folder and click use current folder. Fill out the mp3 info. Fill out the mp3 info with your name, your artist and your album. I just put the season and year, but you can put whatever you want. Click OK and your song will bounce to a wave and MP3 in your projects folder. Save Pro Tools and close it and you're done with your Vocaloid song. This how-to video was made by Tracy Poe.